guys, this is Julia Picard and welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be telling you guys about my Birkin story. So how I scored this beautiful baby of mine. So I'm pretty obsessed with my Birkin and I just want to share with you guys how I got her. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So actually, before we get into this, I just wanted to say that if you're not into luxury good videos, uh, please go ahead and click off and watch some other videos. I have some writing um, videos and there's a bunch of other videos to come. So I just want to make this a positive space. And yeah, let's get into it. How I got my Birkin. So I was headed to um, France for our one year anniversary, my husband and I. But a year prior to that is when I caught the uh, Birkin fever, if you will. So every day I would go on the purse forum and read every single you know, article that I could about how people scored their first Birkin or their first Kelly. And I would um, watch all the YouTube video unboxings about Birkins, Kellys, and then to the point where it was like any Hermes unboxing I wanted to watch. I got really into the craze of Hermes, Birkins, and Kellys. And to the point where I knew about all the different colors, like how to say them in French. Like this is Blue Nuit, and then the color Rouge Cossack and Rouge Decor are the reds, and like what was the newest colors of, you know, that season. Like Poupri was a popular color when um, I was going to France. So I really, really was like pretty obsessed. So anyway, uh, we were going to France, and the way my husband likes to travel is he loves to hit up as many cities and countries as he can in a given trip. He just feels like it, it makes the most of a trip. Sometimes like it takes a lot out of me because I'm more of a, you know, let's just sit and enjoy this one place for a while kind of girl. But in this moment, I was kind of excited that that's how he was because I was like, you know what, more opportunities for us just to go in and ask, do you have a Birkin or a Kelly? which at this point I knew I really just wanted a Birkin. I didn't want a Kelly. Um, and I had read all these tips and tricks, right, of how to get a Birkin or a Kelly. So uh, at that point I was like, okay, I feel very equipped. I know all the cities that have an Hermes store. My husband was like, why don't you write like a blog or publish a book on this because you've done so much research. And I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> anyway, so we get to Paris. And the first store we hit up is just by chance we get there. It's um, the George V store, George V store. And we go there and it's an afternoon and it's this lovely essay who, um, you know, greets us at the door. I say bonjour and she's like, oh, you're French. And she starts speaking to me in French. And um, I stopped her because I couldn't speak French. Um, I do have a very French, you know, maiden name but I told her that I was American. And I think they were all very surprised given, you know, the way I looked and whatever. So I don't know if they were very welcoming for that reason, but she was a lovely essay regardless. But I thought it was a funny thing because my husband was correcting me that morning about the way I say bonjour. And I was like, well, now you can't correct me because they thought I was actually French. <laughs> so I told my husband that I was gonna buy my Christmas present on that trip that um, anyway, because I figured it'd be good to buy something without like just jumping into the question. And I knew that their, you know, the exchange rates would be better anyway. So. I told her I wanted a Click H bracelet, so I ended up buying this one here, which came in this box here. And so we were chatting with SA for honestly a good like 30 minutes, and we were just like having a good time. Anyway, she was laughing a lot, we were getting along. I, I broke the question to her, and I was like, I'm also looking for a bag. And my husband always laughs because he's like, It's just the way you guys talked. It was, I was like, I'm looking for a bag, and she goes, What bag? And like, like, almost like concerned, like I know what you're gonna say. And then I go I'm like a Birkin or a Kelly, cause I want to like, you know, test the waters at that point. And my, and my, that essay that was helping me, so my essay, she was like, oh no, that's gonna be a tough one. And literally, I don't know how to, I can't even recreate it, but we were like scrunching our faces down, like so close. Her face was like this close to me. She was like, you have to try and get a leather appointment the next day. So this was my first time going to an Hermes store. So I was kind of flustered. So this is how flustered I was. I actually left my bag with the bracelet on the counter and the two essays that were helping me, or not, you know, helping to package everything, they started laughing. They're like, you're forgetting your bag. So I went back and took the bag. I think they just thought I was like hilarious without meaning to. I was literally just so flustered out of my mind. I was like, I can't believe I had that first exchange about like 
a Birkin or a Kelly, like, oh my God, like, I know how ridiculous of a process this is. Um, I'm not, you know, naive to that. But of course, like, you know, I saw it as a challenge I wanted to do and I'll get into that a little later. So the next morning we lined up for the leather appointment. We didn't realize we had to line up so early. So what happened was we were probably like 10 people behind. So we didn't get that say we wanted. We thought, you know, we could wait for her to get her. Um, because she was helping another customer. We're like, we'll wait for her. And they were like, nope, you can't wait. We'll we'll pair you with someone else. So we were paired with this male SA and essentially he was pretty blunt and was like, you're not gonna get a Birkin or a Kelly in anywhere in France. Um, all of them are for French, you know, citizens. So I was pretty dismayed by this fact because my SA prior hadn't told me that. So I was like, is this really true? At this point, I'm like, mm, okay, fine. So I waited for my essay to be done and then I told her, I was like, hey, like, can you help us now to get a bag? And she was pretty much like, you already had your leather appointment, so I can't help you. So, you know, I was pretty, you know, dis not disappointed, but, you know, I was like, you know, bummed, if you will, that I couldn't ask her to check the stock for a bag. So essentially, I was like, you know what, she had also given me another full bag of samples, um, which I had given to my mom. And they were, it was really great um, perfume. So I was like, I am gonna buy a perfume bottle regardless. So I bought this one here. And um, so at that point I was like, okay, like at least I feel like I got to talk to her again. So the next morning we lined up a lot earlier and um, we were, you know, probably like the third people online. And at this point, my husband was like making fun of me because it was just like me and a bunch of like other girls. And it was so funny to him to see that like we were doing this and it was also raining so I know it was ridiculous but so we lined up got in and at this point um, we were told that she wasn't in anymore so she hadn't told us that she wasn't going to be in we got paired off with someone else that woman was like no sorry no stock and you're probably not going to get one anytime soon so a little bit more blunt about us not being able to get a bag once again and she was pretty much like, it's probably not worth you coming back here again to try and get a bag because I'm just letting you know they're probably not going to sell it to you. It's kind of hard hearing that. So I told my husband, like, let's not even bother. And they realized that maybe the relationship I had established with the first essay, maybe that wasn't as strong of a connection as I had originally hoped, which it kind of brought me back to like, you know, I, I did rush for a sorority in college. Um, and I was like, wow, it feels like you're like, when you're hoping like, oh, did I make a connection? You could also compare it to dating, if you will. So anyway, at that point, um, we had like maybe two more days in Paris. So this entire time we had been trying to get the online booking appointment at the flagship store. And what happened was we just continuously didn't get it. It's really hard to get. So I had read that you can go to the store and try and ask for an appointment. So we did that. We went, we asked for an appointment and they pretty much were like, you um, you can come back later in the afternoon. Like they, they said yes. So we, I was shocked. I was like so nervous that they were gonna say no. So later that afternoon we went in, we met with a wonderful woman SA and she, she pretty much told us like, tell me what you want. She wrote it down, was very thoughtful. So I was like, wow, she actually really wants to know in detail what we want, which was the first time someone actually asked us what we wanted. So she went in the back, she took a very long time, I think like 20 minutes. So I was like, oh, this could be it because you know, if it takes a while from what I've heard that it could be it. So I'm like internally freaking out. She comes back with an orange box. It was a big box too. And um, she came out and I was like really excited. And she says, this isn't what you wanted, but I think you would still like it. So what she pulls out is a um, bullied bag, which is a, from what she described to me, it's like one of the first, if not the first, Hermes bags that they come out with. It was in a tube, bullied, I think size 30. She said it was a very wanted bag. And, you know, I think I checked the price because, you know, I'm not, I wasn't intending on dropping too much money. And it was a beautiful bag. And I was like, I would have to love the bag. But I was just curious how much it was. And the pricing, I think, was like, uh, I don't know, 5K plus. And at that point, I was like, okay, I'm not going to buy a bag that, I could probably buy, you know, another Chanel or I could buy like almost like another Birkin. So I told her, you know, I wasn't going to take it, which she was surprised because she was like, really? Like, this is a very, very wanted bag. So I told her that was great, but like, I'd rather some other girl who really wants it to have it instead. So at this point, you know, we go to a cafe and like, I'm listening to like another girl who literally just had the same experience as me, like, um, 
at a table nearby and she was like, oh, like I didn't have a Kelly that I really wanted. I ended up buying this bag and like, she was just so bummed and like, I just felt really bad for her and felt for her. But at the same time, I didn't want to get in that state of mind. So, you know, I try to keep, you know, cheery presence and like, when I wasn't in these stores, like obviously I was enjoying the moment with my husband. Like we were going to like see like so many different attractions while we were there. The next day we go again to the flagship because we're like, it's our last day in Paris. What do we have to lose? Like, let's just ask again for an appointment before we go to the other cities. So we go again, they say yes again. It was different, um, I think front desk, you know, the hostess, if you will. Um, taking, um, giving the appointment. So we were able to get an appointment again, just by asking for it. So it was later in the day that appointment. So what we did is we went to the Severy store, which is a third store in Paris. And there, um, it's just like a beautiful store. And since we already had an appointment secured, I'm, I'm okay if we don't get an appointment here. So we go there, my husband asks, and they're pretty much like, you have to line up in the morning. And I was like, well, we're not, I'm not going to put my husband through that anymore. I'm not putting him through waiting, you know, waking up early an hour and a half just to get an appointment and being told that there's no bags. Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. So I was like, you know what? We're not doing that. We go back to the flagship and we go for my appointment. It was a male SA, super sweet, super nice. He pretty much took down the same thing as the woman prior, went back, was a lot quicker, probably like five minutes. So I knew he didn't have, you know, the bag and he didn't come out with anything. And he pretty much was like, there's no stock. Um, so better luck end of, the week, end of the week. I was still hopeful at this point because I was like, you know, there's still a lot more cities, but I was pretty shocked because I was like, well, what if that was my last, last day in France? And like, I know that was my last day in Paris, but also I hadn't really heard of anyone getting this bag anywhere else other than in Paris. So I was like, this is not, this is not working out well. I'm like, I, I, I was doing all the, you know, tips and tricks and like, you know, trying to build a bond and like, you know, trying to be genuine as possible, like trying to explain why it's important to me, right? And all those things really weren't working. And I was just kind of like, wow, like I might leave this trip without a bag. And that kind of like made me nervous because I did want to buy it in Europe because it, it was something I dreamed about for a year. So anyway, and not, not only that, and like had safe for and like, you know, put a lot of effort into. So at this point, we now are going to take our a train to Marseille, to the south of France, so that we can take a car ride to Provence area, rent a car. Uh, and that's where we're going to stay at a chateau for a couple of days. So what happened was, is we actually missed our train um, because we just didn't calculate things right. And so we actually had to rent a car and drive all the way down the south of France. So I felt bad that this you know, situation happened and I felt bad for like obviously going in all those mornings. So I told my husband I would do the driving so he could just relax in the car. So we, um, we, I drove like around four or five hours. So we drove to Lyon and, um, we slept in Lyon. So I actually knew that Lyon had a Hermes store. Next morning he said we could go there quickly before we go to the Provence area. So we went to, um, yeah, we went to Leon's store. Actually, I didn't go. So what happened was um, I was sitting in the car and I was at this point, I was like, you just go in. I was tired from driving. I was like, you know, just go. I, I just don't want to do it anymore. We've been rejected like what, like three to four times already, if not five. I can't recall at this point. So I was like, you just go. I'm just in the car. I really don't want to go. And like I had heard that sometimes the essays are more receptive to like husbands, um, like spouses. Um, so I was like, you know what? You just go. I, I just really didn't want to be rejected to at that point. And while he was in there, the funny thing is that one of the girls that I was lining up with at the George store in Paris came out. And this girl, mind you, I remember her because she always was decked out in like beautiful luxury clothes like the first day she was wearing like a Louis Vuitton overcoat and then the next day she was wearing like an all Gucci outfit with like an Hermes um, Constance bag and then when I saw her at that store she was wearing again a different all Gucci outfit and like I, I think I even googled that like outfit because I was like damn that's beautiful like I wonder how much it is and it, it was really expensive and I was just like like and I never compare myself to people. Like, I don't think that's right. And I don't like to do assumptions, but like just to be as transparent and honest as possible in that moment, I was like, if someone like that can't get a bag, like how can I get a bag? It was more like, I just felt very defeated. Cause I was like, am I just joking with myself that I'm going to get this bag? Like, 
And I, I know, like, you know, I've never, I guess because I'm ready to wear is so expensive, especially from these luxury houses, I feel like you really have to have disposable income to have it. And obviously there's other ways, like I have this Gucci skirt that I bought, but I bought it from like Woodbury Common, so it's a lot more reasonably priced. Um, and so anyway, like, I don't know, maybe she bought all those clothes from like, you know, an outlet too. But part of me was like, wow, like if, if she didn't like, am I really the clientele that's supposed to be shopping here? I know like that's really, like not the right attitude, but I'm just trying to be honest in this storyline. So you guys know, like my feelings and thoughts and like, this is probably like a lower point, you know, I felt in the storyline. He comes out and since I saw that couple come out before him um, without anything, like I was like, of course he's not gonna come out with anything. So he didn't come out with a bag. Uh, so I knew he didn't get one. But once he got in the car, he was like, actually I got the essays business card. And at this point I was freaking out because I was like, wow, like I have read that like essays don't give out business cards just to whoever. Like they must really like you to give out a business card. So I was beyond excited that he got that card. And at this point he said that they don't have stock, but if they, if we were going to be around that we should email her and check if there's going to be more stock. So that's what we did. We um, immediately emailed her saying like, Hey, we're going to be in the area south of France on this trip. Like, let us know if you have get, get anything in stock. So at that point, we're in the chateau for like the next couple of days. He, I promised my husband we would not talk about anything or me. So we just enjoyed it. We went bike riding, all this fun stuff. We went to a vineyard. Uh, we just really enjoyed the moment. And then as we're driving to St. Tropez and then Monaco, we're going to do a day trip with both. We get an email from the essay in, um, in what is it? It's, sorry, in Lyon saying, oh, like, I have something that might interest you. So at this point, I'm like, oh, she has the bag. We have to turn around. We have to get it. Like, this is it. And my husband's like, no, we're not turning around for this woman. Like, like I love the fact that you're into this, but we can't let it like, away from the agenda at hand. So I'm glad he told me that. And like, he was honest and we didn't end up going back for the bag. Cause you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, respect your, you know, the fact that you're on a trip and trying to enjoy it and you shouldn't make anything only about the materialistic things, right? Uh, so I'm really glad that my husband told me that he wouldn't have been happy if we had turned around and I'm glad that I, you know, had enough common sense to know that we should continue to St. Tropez and, and uh, Monaco. And sorry, just to pause here, um, so we actually did, before Saint-Tropez and Monaco, I think we did do a day trip at the Chateau to Aix in Provence. And my husband did say we could go into an Hermes store there. And at that Hermes store, I did um, end up purchasing an Herb bags in blue indigo. It was beautiful, stunning. Uh, what happened was the, the essay told me that he might have a Birkin, but came out with a bag. And I fell in love with it. It looks like a Kelly. And I was like, you know what? If I don't come back with a Birkin, at least I'll have this Hermes bag as a memento. So, you know, I was very, very happy with it. At this point, I was kind of like, if I don't get the bag, because I hadn't heard from the essay from Leon yet, and I had bought that herb bag, I was like, you know, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with not getting a Birkin on this trip. So as we're going to Saint Tropez and Monaco, that's when we get the email from the essay saying, hey, I have something you might be interested in. And we told her, um, you know, that we wouldn't be able to get there for another two days because we were going to be in Saint-Tropez, Monaco, and then take a train back to Paris. And then the next day we would be able to take a train to Lyon. Just like, ugh, I'm really nervous that she's going to get rid of the bag to someone else. You know, it, it, it was tough, but you know, I let it go. We just enjoyed Saint-Tropez and Monaco. So anyway, while we're there, he was like, on top of that, not wanting to turn around, he's like, I don't even want to waste our time there if it's not a Birkin or a Kelly. So I want to specifically ask her what bag it is. And I was like so nervous because I was like, I had read about all this Hermes etiquette and like you're not supposed to ask them what bag it is. Like they're being vague for a reason. So he did it and you know, I was like, whatever. You did, you figured out to get her, you know, emailed to, and built this relationship to this point. So clearly, you know, more than me. So he emailed her saying like, oh, is it the bag that I asked for? Or could you tell me specifically what bag it is? just because we're on vacation, we have limited number of days. And she emailed back saying that it was, um, I, I think she said it was the bag that he had asked for. So it was a Birkin 30 or 25 and it was in the fuchsia color. So I knew that was like probably the poopery because it was very popular um, that season. So anyway, on the train ride back to Paris, the entire time I 
kept researching Poupre and I was like, oh my God, like I, this isn't the color I wanted, but like, can I learn to love it kind of thing? And just so you're aware, this is the color Poupre and I bought it because um, just like, I thought it was cute that like this was originally the bag I was going to get or, you know, had been offered. And I literally was like trying to make Poupre work for me. And you know when you kind of have to convince yourself so much that like something is right that you know for sure that it's not right. So essentially when I knew that I wasn't going to buy the bag. So I told my husband, I was like, hey, we can go, but I'm not going to buy the bag because I don't think it's right to spend so much money on a bag. And also like take away the opportunity from another girl getting the same bag. Maybe she wanted Poupri and that was like her number one color. So I told my husband I wouldn't buy it. So anyway, we go to the store and at this point, like my stomach felt so sick because I just didn't even want to be presented with a bag that like I knew I wasn't going to buy. And like, I was just so, so upset that it wasn't the right color. So in, and she's like, that's say I meet for the first time. She's like, I'm so, so sorry, but we don't have that bag anymore. And I go, it's okay. Like at that point I was like, okay, whatever we're here, we'll just look around. And she's like, no, I have three other bags to show you though. And I was like, three other bags? And at this point I was freaking out because I was like, okay, she knows I want a Birkin, so it's probably a good bag. She's showing me three. So the first one was a Kelly 25 silver hardware Togo, uh, actually Clemence leather in Coupre. So this, so for those of you who don't know, Kelly 25 is literally the hardest, or 25 for Kelly or Birkin is probably the hardest size to get right now, just because it's so in demand and so popular. So anyway, I knew that was like a very like demanded bag, but it just wasn't the one I want. I didn't want Kelly. I didn't want the color. And I knew had I been presented with Poupri, I would not have bought it in a Birkin. I just knew. So anyway, I told her, no, thank you. So she took the bag back. And then she told me the other two colors she had was um, for Birkin 30 were blue Zanzibar, which is like a oceany blue or a blue Nuet, which is like a uh, navy blue, which is this one. So all of these bags were in Saran wrap. So again, at this point, I didn't want to waste her time and I knew the blue Nuet was going to be right for me. It was a neutral color and I've been really trying hard to get a neutral color. So at this point, um, I told her, don't even worry with the blue Zanzibar. I wanted someone else to experience like a Saran, like, you know, like a clear Saran wrap, like box where it's brand new just for you. And I was like, I know I'm not going to buy that. So I'm not going to look at it, even though it would nice be nice to see what a blue Zanzibar looked like on a Birkin 30. So anyway, she opened up this one for me and I was just over the moon excited. It was like love at first sight. My husband even says it in the other video, if you guys watch it. And I honestly couldn't be any happier. I truly feel like everything worked out right in the end. We weren't meant to catch that train. We were meant to like miss our train so that we'd be forced to go to Leon, which was, which was like not even part of our itinerary at all. We, you know, it was meant to be that we didn't turn around to try and get the Birkin 30 into Poupri because that's when she ended up selling it to some other client. And then that's why she had three other colors for us to choose from. So I was beyond excited. It was the best moment. I couldn't be any happier. The essay was wonderful. Um, and you know, it was just, it was crazy. Um, it was, she presented the bag out in the open. Typically they say it's in a closed room in Lyon. I think it's like a smaller store, so they don't have closed rooms or maybe they were occupied, but I will say my husband told me that while she was presenting these bags, there was like a girl there that was literally like, like fuming watching me open these bags. Cause I, I guess she wanted one. But if anything, I, I didn't, I wasn't upset. I didn't even, I didn't even notice these people because like I was just so focused on the bag. So anyway, this is my Hermes story. I'm very, very, very blessed to have this bag. I'm so grateful and happy. And, you know, I'm glad that I was able to challenge myself not to give up, to, you know, continue to endure, to enjoy the moment, even when I wasn't getting the yeses and, you know, constantly being rejected because that happens in life you will go through you know different obstacles in life and constantly be told no and you have to hold out sometimes for that yes I also reward myself for all the hard work I put in um, over the years with like self-publishing a book and um, a bunch of sketch videos with a close friend of mine so things like that I wanted to finally reward myself um, for all these creative endeavors I do on the side while having a full-time job all in all it was a wonderful trip I'm beyond 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 happy with this bag literally it brings me so much joy. I think that there will be days where 
there have been days where I will be sitting at my desk working on a writing project where I'll literally just be like having this on my desk and looking at it, knowing that if I set my mind to something that I can achieve it. So I'm grateful that I saved all my money for this and I'm grateful that, you know, I was successfully able to get the Birkin 30 in blue Nuet gold hardware. My favorite hardware, by the way, is gold. Um, and also in Togo leather, which was my leather of choice. Uh, also one other note, sorry, is that she did tell me that um, I didn't have to purchase anything, so, but I did end up purchasing these two Twillies, this wallet and another wallet for my friend or card holder. Uh, sorry, I think this is a yeah card holder. Um, uh, or anyway, she told me she did not offer me this bag for um, purchase history reason. She said it was because she just didn't want anyone to be turned off from the brand. And I thought that was an interesting to know, thing to note because I realized that what my husband had told her, I hadn't wanted to go in to you know, look for a Birkin in that store, really hit her hard and she didn't want to be you know, one of the people that turns off someone from the brand. And we are young professionals, um, so I, I would say that this is just the beginning of our relationship with Hermes. So good to know that that's the reason why she actually said yes to us. Uh, though my sister will say that she feels it was interesting that she only emailed us after we bought the herb bag and they all like can see like I, I believe they can see um other stores in france like your purchase history there so i don't know if that really came to play um regardless i'm happy i got the bag but you know you can speculate if you will why or how i got the bag uh but yeah at the end of the day i will say i'm probably not gonna get another birkin for a while and i'm really 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 happy with this one i'll probably write a little um blog post on the purse forum about how I got my bag since I loved reading those and um, I'll probably have a lot more detail on that one as well so you can read about it there. Thank you guys for joining in and be sure to give this uh, video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to uh, watch other different videos on luxury goods or writing uh, motivation and things of the, that sort um, and yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in. Bye!